How would you describe or define physical medicine and rehabilitation as a specialty? Mm -hmm. So that's a good question because a lot of people have not heard of physiatry. So um, physical medicine and rehabilitation is kind of a broad specialty that can encompass a number of different um, subspecialties within it. So as I kind of mentioned, you can focus on sports medicine, general musculoskeletal medicine, spinal cord injury, um, ABI, amputees and prosthetics, or um, spasticity management. So there's a lot within that kind of overall title. Physiatrists tend to pick a few of those domains and then specialize in them. Um, so it, it kind of depends who you're working with, what you will see. Mm -hmm. And how is a physiatrist different than an orthopedic surgeon, sports medicine, or neurologist? Yeah, that's a great question. So physiatry is a, a non-operative specialty. So people often come to me and say, oh, you're, you're going to do the surgery, but I have to make it very clear that we are uh, conservative management, non-operative. So that's how we differ from orthopedics or how we differ from uh, an orthopedic surgeon. So we work quite closely with orthopedic surgeons actually to manage their patients conservatively, either prior to surgery or after surgery. Um, however, we would not do uh, a surgery ourselves. And it's kind of a, a combination of um, non-operative ortho management and uh, neurology uh, kind of mixed together. So we focus on both the um, kind of neurological system, but the musculoskeletal system combined and look at the person kind of as a whole presentation and can see uh, multiple different uh, types of patients because of the broad scope of physiatry. What other treatment modalities can physiatry uh, offer? Mm -hmm. So um, in my clinic, we do a lot of uh, interventional medicine. So all, uh, all of our injections are guided. So we do ultrasound guided intraarticular injections, tendon fenestration, um, and other types of procedures to manage uh, joint complaints or other musculoskeletal complaints non-operatively. We also make recommendations for physiotherapy, occupational therapy, any, any rehab recommendations essentially is, is what we um, would be looking at speaking with the patient about. And we can coordinate patient care with uh, other specialists that we, we think should kind of be on the team. So we work closely with neurosurgery, orthopedic surgery, and neurology to manage our patients um, kind of as a, a whole team approach. And in physiatry, um, what what classes of medications are you generally prescribing or renewing for patients? Mm -hmm. So in our practice, we don't do a lot of kind of overall pain management. We will prescribe short-term analgesia for our patients, such as NSAIDs or Tylenol, but we do not prescribe uh, opioids, mainly because we find it difficult to follow up with the patients. So I'll often make medication recommendations and um, start the medication, give them a two or three week course, and then have them follow up with their family physician or another attending provider, whether they're um, enrolled in a chronic pain program, uh, to, to have that medication followed closely and titrated as needed. So we will prescribe um, gabapentin or pregabalin for neuropathic type pain. We will also look at spasticity management um, with certain types of medications. We do uh, Botox injections as well for spasticity management. So uh, again, with the medication piece, we will start the medications, but often ask them to follow up with their primary care provider to, um, to titrate or make any adjustments. Can you describe the particular practice setting that you're in? Yes, so I work with one supervising physician. Our practice focuses on a few different things. So we have a sport medicine kind of patient population where we're seeing high-performing athletes on a regular basis. Then we see general musculoskeletal medicine. So um, primarily, actually, we focus on hips. Uh, that's just where the kind of the practice has uh, led. So we do a lot of hip injections, but also manage extra articular soft tissue uh, hip um, diagnoses. And then we'll see shoulders, elbows, ankles, kind of your, your general MSK presentations. We also do um, some inpatient work on the spinal cord injury unit. That happens about three to four months of the year. So I find that really interesting and rewarding. And we do spasticity clinic for our patients with spinal cord injury, cerebral palsy, other neurodegenerative disorders, and we do Botox injections and other um, allied healthcare 
pain management for those patients. Okay. And can you just list off a few common conditions that you see or that you come across in physiatry? Mm -hmm. So as I kind of mentioned, we see a wide variety of patients. So in terms of our musculoskeletal uh, patients, we're seeing a lot of um, hip pathology, whether that's osteoarthritis, labral pathology, or extra articular involvement. So gluteal tendinopathy, bursitis, um, and other kind of muscular conditions around the hip. Uh, In terms of shoulders, we see rotator cuff injuries, labral tears of the shoulder, um, and then we're looking at other tendinopathies of the knee, ankle, um, kind of elbow, really, really everything. Um, And we tend to treat those with kind of a a wide range of modalities depending on the patient. so in the in the sport population, we do more acute injury management and return to play from those injuries. Um, and then in our uh, spasticity population, we see a number of different diagnoses, but try to provide them with kind of an overall uh, approach to care that will allow them to improve and, and function better in their setting. And any rare conditions that you've come across? Well, uh, both in our MSK population and in our... Um, spasticity population, I often come across things that um, I've never seen before and they're kind of rare and wonderful and I find it very challenging and interesting to see those patients. So um, anywhere from kind of genetic disorders that are causing um, muscle hypertrophy to uh, neurodegenerative conditions, uh, for example, Friedrich's ataxia or or other kind of diagnoses that are very rare, um, we sometimes see, and it's a good challenge for us to uh, manage them uh, and communicate with the other providers that are on the team to really um, be able to manage these patients well. How would you describe your role as a PA in this practice? Yeah, so my role is quite dynamic. Um, Depending on the day, I'm doing different things in clinic. So I will see both new consults and follow-up patients. Um, For a new consult, I will typically um, see them, review all of the imaging, do a physical exam, come up with an assessment and plan, and then review with my supervising physician. So the patient gets to meet him and um, kind of review what we had talked about. If there's any further questions, they're able to ask us at that time. In terms of follow-up patients, Um, I tend to know the patients quite well, so I'm seeing many follow-ups that we've either done intervention for and we want to see how that's going a few months later, or follow-ups from diagnostic imaging and reviewing that with the patients and again, coming up with a plan and reviewing with the team what the options are. I do uh, interventions as well. So I'm doing ultrasound guided injections. We have specific injection days where we see many patients. Um, And so I've uh, added that to my scope of practice after working with doctors and being trained by him as well as others who are doing these types of procedures. So become quite comfortable with ultrasound guided procedures and um, I enjoy that part of the practice. Uh, Otherwise, I'm kind of managing patient flow throughout the clinic. I'm liaising with the allied health team a lot of the time and trying to kind of provide that comprehensive care for our patients. Oftentimes, I get feedback that the patients enjoy kind of seeing me because we get to spend a lot of time together and talk about their options. And they often feel that things have been explained quite well, whether it was, you know, I went through a model of the knee and showed them exactly where their injury was or wrote down the plan for them to go home with which um, I enjoy giving that to the patients and having them leave feeling good about their appointment. Mm -hmm. And what do you enjoy about physiatry? Um, Everything. (laughs) Um, I honestly, I really, really enjoy this patient population. I find it challenging. I find it interesting. I find it ever-changing. And I look forward to kind of learning more in the future and seeing where... um, where physiatry goes. It's still quite a new and growing specialty and there's lots of research and evidence-based medicine coming out around certain uh, conditions that we see. So that part is exciting to me to to know that I'll be involved in that in the future and continue to learn more and um, be excited about my work. And what do you find challenging uh, working in physiatry? What I find most challenging is the patients that we can't make a difference for. 
So in this specialty, we, we often have complicated patients and after exhausting a number of different treatment modalities, sometimes we have to have that conversation that, you know, we've done all that we can. And I find that very difficult because they are coming to you as the specialist, as kind of their last resort, last hope, last intervention. So that's a lot of kind of burden on us to provide that care and have the answers and sometimes we don't so I find that piece kind of difficult and often uh, I'm left feeling like I wish I could do more and that just motivates me to continue to be educated and and do kind of provide the best care I can to my patients. Can you sort of compare um, what it takes for the training for someone to become a physiatrist versus training to be a PA in physiatry? Yes, yeah, so um, when you go to medical school and um, get accepted into physiatry residency, that's a five-year residency. So within their five years, they're doing rotations in a number of different specialties and locations. They get a lot of training and experience in um, rehab-specific uh, um, medicine, whether that's with oncology, whether that's cardiac rehab, whether that's uh, pure spinal cord injury or uh, stroke rehab. Um, so the, the residents spend five years getting to, to do and learn all of those things. Um, whereas as a PA, you're trained as a generalist after two years of education in the Mac PA program. Um, when you're being didactic, when you're being clerkship, you are kind of out in the workplace and uh, working. So in those first couple of years, the scope is quite small because especially with a limited um, background in a certain specialty, it's going to take a little bit to kind of understand the common presentations and the different uh, treatment modalities out there. Um, I found that coming from my background in kinesiology and sports and spinal cord injury, I had a very good base going into my role as a physiatry PA and I was able to pull from my previous education and experience to allow me to really kind of fully engage um, immediately with our patient population. Now, if, you're, if you are coming from a, a limited background, it's still doable and there's um, it really it comes from the support of your supervising physician or team to allow you to continue to learn and be integrated into the practice. Okay, and any tips for PA students that are hoping to pursue physiatry? Um, so I would say that if, if you're a student that you're, and you're interested in physiatry, get as much exposure to it as you can, whether that's doing longitudinal placements, setting up a clerkship elective, or just speaking to physician assistants who are involved in the specialty or other healthcare providers that work in physiatry to truly understand, you know, what the different types of physiatry um, kind of divisions are and how you think you would be implemented into that practice. And I found that the best thing for me was doing the elective and placement there to understand um, what it was all about. So I'm a physician assistant. I currently practice in Hamilton. I work in physiatry. Um, I work with one supervising physician in quite a busy physiatry practice, both at the Hamilton General and at McMaster. So I did my undergraduate education at McMaster um, in kinesiology, so that was a four-year Bachelor of Science degree. After that, I took a gap year and worked in research.